Here we've got the great wheel, the second wheel, the third wheel, the fourth wheel, the fifth wheel, and the sixth wheel. So it's a six wheel train which strikes for a year. And look how beautifully fine the gearing is from a reasonably coarse great wheel. And then it gets finer and finer as it goes up the train, almost uh, watch-like in this top. And you see the, there's a, um, a plate moved in to shorten all the arbors um, to make the more watch-like construction at the top end of the train here. The fourth wheel here is the pin wheel for the strike and I'll make it strike three now. Lovely sound. Let's make it strike four. And you can see the, the rack lifting the mechanism here. Coming to strike five and watch the rack lifting the, until it engages onto the pin. You can see the fly, it's a tiny, tiny little fly. Um, again, when you think of the reduction through the six wheel train, um, the fly has very little to drive it and so that it doesn't need a great big fly to uh, keep it going at the correct speed. Instead of having a great big bell at the top here, you've got this uh, lovely little quiet bell uh, in keeping with the light movement. Um, it would be impossible to have a great big clonking bell because you couldn't drive it for the year. So it's just coming up to six o'clock. Just coming up to seven o'clock. So you can see the great wheel, the second wheel, the third wheel, but the other wheels are hidden and the escape wheel is hidden by this great big pillar right in the middle. And the only way you can do that is to go and look at the top, over the top. The pinned construction for the dial plate and pinned construction for the main pillars. Nice overring. Unfortunately, the big center pillar um, makes it quite difficult to be able to see the escape wheel, but this is looking up from below so that it's a, a shot looking up at the escape wheel with the anchor in, in view. And you can see the anchor and the recoil of the mechanism for each tick.